G'day, this is Mr. Thompson, and this is the first of a series of videos that will show you how to use Inventor to design your CO2 racer. Now, whenever you start a project in Inventor, uh, you should set up a new project in Inventor. Let me show you. If I go to File, and then New, uh, actually, no, File, then Manage, Projects. Now, um, here I can create a new project. You can see I've got a few projects that I've uh, worked on before, um, but let's do, um, let's create a new project. So I'm come down here and click new, and it's a new single user project, and I give it a name. So I'm gonna call it CO2 Racer, like that. And you can see it's created a folder, or it will create a folder for me, where it will keep all of the files. Um, so it keeps everything nice and organized. Um, now you can actually put that folder wherever you want. So if you want to, you can go and put it somewhere else. Um, so it would be good to make sure that, uh, if, especially if you're using a school computer that other people also use, it would be good to put your project somewhere on the cloud, somewhere maybe under your document so that you can access it from a different computer if you need to. All right, so I'm gonna click finish here. And because that, pro that folder doesn't exist yet, it'll create it automatically when I go OK. There we go. And you can see there's my project. And if I want to change projects, I can just double click on whichever project I want to work on. Um, so I'm working on my CO2 racer project. So I'm going to click Done. And we're away. OK. Um, now, I'm going to go File and New. Now, um, I don't want to click one of these. I'm going to just click uh, this new over here because that'll give me a few more options. So clicking new there. Um, all right, now my, the template that I've got installed is the US English template. Um, that's okay. I, I don't want to come and click over here on just a standard part because because this is a US template, it'll use feet and inches and all sorts of horrible things like that. We don't want that. So I'm going to open this template here and find the metric options. So when I click on metric, now you can see I've got the option to use millimeters. Now let's have a quick look at uh, the sort of things you can do in Inventor. You can create a part or you can create an assembly. And an assembly is when you put multiple parts together or you can create a drawing, which is a drawing of either a part or an assembly. So we're going to start, and usually you'll start by creating a part. Now I'm going to use not a sheet metal part, I'm going to use a standard part, and I'm going to use this standard part in millimetres. So I'm going to double click there. Okay, and we've got a, a blank uh, file for a part. Uh, let's, let's name it before we do anything. So I'm going to go File, and then save, and you can see it's automatically putting it in my CO2 folder, in my project folder, and it's. Gonna, I'm gonna call this uh, blank, because I'm gonna start by just drawing the balsa blank. That's our starting point. So I'm gonna click save, there we go. Now, to start drawing, I'm just gonna, usually what you do in Inventor is you start by drawing a 2D sketch. So uh, it's not the only way, but it's the way I usually start. So we start a 2D sketch, um, and it shows us different planes that we can work from. Now, I'm going to start on this plane here, the YZ plane. So I'm going to click on that plane there. And now it's taking me into the YZ plane and I can draw a picture of the blank or a 2D sketch. So I'm going to draw the side on view of the blank. Um, and when I start drawing it, I'm just going to draw it with lines, with straight lines. And I'm not going to worry about the dimensions yet. So I'm just going to draw the shape. And the shape looks like this. I'm going to start at the origin. Um, so I'm just going to click and release. Then move up to here. Uh, another point on this vertical line. I'm going to go click and release. And then I'm going to go, come somewhere down here. Click and release. And keeping, making sure I keep that line there absolutely vertical. Come down to that bottom line there. Click and release. And then come over to where I started. Click and release. And now I'm going to press escape so that I'm no longer drawing lines. Okay, so now that's what it looks like. Now it's not the right dimensions yet, so I need to dimension it. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to use this dimension uh, option. So if I click on dimension, and I'm going to, first I'm going to click on this line here. Now if I measure the balsa blank that I've got, 
I find that the balsa blank is 70 millimeters. So I've clicked on the line, I'll come out to the side and I'll place the dimension there. And then I'm going to type 70, actually it was, it was actually 72 millimeters. So 72, so I'm going to put 72 there. And then I'm going to either enter or click that. Now that's gone off the page. So I can zoom a number of ways. I can zoom with the wheel on my mouse, or I can zoom by pinching uh, on my mouse pad on my laptop. Um, that's a bit trickier. Or I can come over here and this button here is really handy. That's the zoom all button. Uh, and if I click zoom all, it automatically zooms so that I can see everything in my drawing. So that you're going to use that a lot. All right, next dimension. So I've still got dimension selected and I'm coming down here and I'm clicking on this line here and I'll place the dimension there. And that dimension there, if I measure my blank, it should be about 305 millimeters, 305. And again, it's gone off the page. So I'll come over here and zoom all again. Okay, and this length here, if I click on that one, that one should be, when I measured that, that was 20 millimeters, 20 like that. Um, and so there is a side on view of my balsa blank. So I'm gonna finish my sketch like that um, and now actually I, I need to zoom all again so zoom all so I can see it good all right now I need to convert I need to convert that 2d sketch into a 3d object and we call that extruding so we're going to extrude um, so if I click on extrude there and there's only one sketch so it's automatically selected that sketch to be the one that I extrude um, and you can see it's extruded by 10 millimeters Let's look at some of these options. Um, these options here tell me the direction I want to extrude. So if I want to, that's the default, it's come forward. I could extrude backwards. I could extrude in both directions or I, or I could extrude a little way in one dimension and a further distance in another dimension. So I'm gonna stick with the, just the default over here. Um, there are some other options. I'll talk to you about the other options later when we use them. All right. So how far? Well, if I measure my blank, my blank is 40 millimeters wide. So I'm gonna type 40 there. So I could have typed it there or I could have typed it down there and click okay. And there we go. Now I've got my 3D blank. Um, well, actually not quite. I haven't got the hole in the back. So my blank has a hole in the back for the CO2 cylinder. So I'm gonna just rotate my object around. Now the way I do that, if I use this little cube up here, I can do a few things. I can drag the cube like that, and you can see that allows to me, me to rotate, um, or, I can, uh, or I can click on certain faces. So if I click on back, it shows me the back. Then I can use these arrows. I can rotate, or these arrows here, I can rotate around like that, or I can even click on the top of the cube, the, the corner of the cube, or an edge of the cube, and it shows me different ways of rotating uh, my object. Um, or I can click on home. If I click on home, it just takes me back to that default isometric view. All right, so I need to see the back. So I'm just going to drag around here until I can see the back. You know what? That'll do. Um, I, I need to draw the circle on the back for the, for the CO2 hole. So let's do that. If I go start 2D sketch, and then when I, once I've clicked on start 2D sketch, I've got to come over and say, that's the surface that I want to sketch onto that. All right. Now this time I don't want to draw a line. I want to draw a circle. So there's my circle. So I'm going to click on the circle and I'm just going to put a circle anywhere here. Don't worry about lining it up exactly. We'll fix that in a minute. So draw my circle and there's my circle. Actually, you know what? I measured my circle and my, measure, my circle was actually 19 millimeters in diameter. So on the blank, it's 19 millimeters. So I'll type 19 and enter. Now you'll notice the circle is purple. The reason the circle is purple is because it hasn't been fully constrained yet. We haven't told Inventor exactly where it's got to go. And you'll see when I do constrain it, um, it'll go black. So to constrain it, I need to put some dimensions in. So I've already got the dimension of the diameter, but let's do some other dimensions there. Um, how far up has the center of the circle got to be? So from here, from this bottom line, so if I click on the bottom line, and then click on the center of the circle, then I can create a dimension there. And when I measured that, 
um, that was 31 millimeters so 31 is the height now uh, so that that's um, that's been constrained it's still purple though which means I, I haven't constrained it backwards and forwards I to haven't told inventor that this needs to be exactly in the center so let's do that now instead of dimension I'm going to use this tool here which is vertical constraint and that means that tells inventor that two things are aligned vertically so if I click on that one there now I'm going to click on the center point of the circle and then I'm going to find the midpoint there it is find the midpoint of that bottom line so when I hover over the midpoint it highlights so if I click on that there we go now you can see that my circle has gone black which means it's fully constrained um, you don't have to fully constrain everything in a sketch but it's a good practice to do so so let's finish the sketch now okay um, let's just I want to just rotate that a little bit so let me do that actually I might even look at it that'll do uh, and again I'll zoom all so I can see it a bit bigger all right now I need to extrude uh, that hole there I need to I need to cut a hole uh, using that sketch into the blank so again I'm going to click on extrude and by default can you see it extrudes outwards it adds or does what we call a join extrusion um, I want it to go the other direction so I'm going to use this option here and now it's pushed it it's actually cut can you see down here that was a join it was a join before now it's a cut so cut means we're actually cutting into an existing solid when we do the extrusion okay so we're going to cut um, and now how far are we going to cut um, I'm going to use well for it says 40 mil millimeters if I measure the hole on my blank it's actually 50 millimeters so I'm going to type 50 there so that tells it to cut a 50 millimeter deep extrusion into my blank okay and so now if I go back to actually I can go back to home if I want or I can have a look at my beautiful creation by scrolling around um, that's finished so my blank is finished so again I'm going to save it and that's the end of this first video